Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Fantasy Cow Radia. Now, when we left off, I had stated that we were going to head on to a Nuzdak castle if it had not been taken by that time, and it is still under Serenid control. However, I believe there was another fief, and it may have been taken by... The Dro? Maybe? Hmm. That is a little strange. Okay. I actually thought there were two castles. Oh, there it is. Aha, it is in the wastelands all the way out there. So, yes, it appears we'll have to take that as well at some point. Now, one of you stated in the comments that I was looking for a Vorpal Blade, and that is exactly what I was looking for. But unfortunately, your suggestion of heading over here was wrought with utter failure. No fault of yours, of course. It is just the fact that the town does not actually have it in their marketplace at the moment. Or at least maybe it does now? Ooh. No, I don't think so, unfortunately enough. I'm just checking down here. I did sell a couple of items here, I must admit, as well, so... <laughs> Yes, that's what we're seeing right there, and ooh, very nice crossbow, I must admit, but of course we have magic, so there's no need for that at the moment. So yes, I checked there, and I also checked at Cherise, De Cuba, Barry, and Amarad, and also Halmar, but unfortunately there were no Vorpal Blades to be found, so maybe the marketplaces need to refresh their stock, and we will check at a later time, and hopefully be able to find one that suits our needs. Now. Quite a few of you in the comments have stated that you want us to start our own faction. Now, what I will be doing is leaving this up to democracy, I suppose, and placing two comments in the section below the video. One will say, stay with the Delthusum Empire, and the other one will say, leave the Delthusum Empire. Now, you can, of course, upvote whichever option you want us to take, and I will go with the majority on that. So make sure, if you want to see a particular path, that you vote on those comments. Okay, so, now that is done, we are hopefully going to be heading to a Nuzdak castle. Now, my potential plan for if and when we make our own faction is, as you can see, Quite a few times, the Lich King himself, Lich King Malyron, has decided that we are not worthy of the particular fief that we have conquered, and he has decided that we will not gain ownership over it. Now, if we do that, and he says that once again, we could potentially renounce our allegiance and start our own faction, and then we would be able to carry on from there, of course. However, if we are obviously going to stay with the Delthusum Empire, then we don't really need to worry about that, but that is what I have thought would be probably the best way to go about things in terms of defection. And, of course, one of you stated that taking the Nord, Rodok, or maybe, was it the Swadians or the Vagir's territory? Not too sure. I will have to take a look at that once again, but yes, one of those factions may be a good starting point, and that might be a good idea. I think the Nords would probably be the best, because they seem to be far away from anything that can hurt us. Although, saying that, they are incredibly close to the dwarves. And that brings me to another comment where one of you said that the dwarves are incredible versus the Uridus Majocracy, and they would be very nice to take. However, because of their size, they are unable to climb the ladders. So that is a little bit unfortunate, I must admit. I was hoping that we could have a rather dwarf centric army, but that has completely thwarted all of my plans right there. So, we will hopefully be able to find a different solution. Maybe we will have quite a few dwarves, but not an overwhelming majority of them, because we do have a significant number. As you can see, we have dwarf paragons, and we also have some dwarven fighters, but it does appear that they are able to climb the ladders. I'm not entirely sure why they are able to now. As you said in the comment, they were not able to. At least, maybe these ladders they are able to, but maybe siege towers, maybe they're not? Hmm. Well, we will see as time goes on, of course. And now, as you can see, I have purchased some of these throwing weapons, because, of course, I did say we were going to be using some, and it would be rather nice to be able to. However, I also bought this, which is a magical shield. And I am able to use it, as you can see here. Look at that! That is so cool. So now we can actually block using our mana, which would be rather nice. So, oh, there's some healing. Thank you very much. We are now full HP once again, even though I took a rather serious blow in that other engagement with those few units there. And we will now gather our fireball. 
And I will be dealing damage through the wall to them. Oh yes, our fire burns so bright that we are able to throw it so far through the wall right there. Oh yes, took out a lesser mercenary mage along the way as well. Now, the only thing I am rather hopeful for is we are able to find that Vorpal Blade because, as you know, I used it in the special feature of this mod and I was so impressed with it that I said to myself, oh yes, we have to find one of those as quickly as we could in a real series if and when I actually made it, and of course we have, but yes, I was attempting to find it as fast as I could, but at that time, when I had access to it, I actually didn't have the money, so yes, a little unfortunate, but nevertheless we are able to take quite a few of these Dark Mages and a Necromancer, that is great, so we have one space, technically, so let's see what we're going to take here. Hmm. I think an Orc Bear Warrior will probably be the most interesting because of course we do have a rather serious amount of mages now, and High Priests, bear in mind, so that's pretty cool because of course they do heal our units, and I must remember to take these prisoners! Oh yes, don't forget those, that would be an utter atrocity. Now we do have an Adept Hood that we can take here. I don't think it will be too useful, but you never know, we may need it on one of our companions. And as you can see, I have outfitted our entire inventory with a huge amount of food, so I'm hoping that we will not have any morale issues, and I will be asking no rewards once again. So. Let us now move, gather 26 shadows, oh yes, there we are, 26 shadows, that is exactly what I want right there. Okay, well, seeing as this is currently undefended, and I'm pretty sure that our vassals will be a little bit too slow to be able to defend it too well, we are going to be placing our hardened shadows in the garrison here, and maybe if and when we take Ikimur, which may indeed want to be now, hmm, not too sure about that. I think we'll probably head to the castle over here first, but, ah, uh, should we? I don't know. I think heading to the castle might be a good idea, but it is a little bit further away than we would like, because as you can see here, Tolga is only a stone's throw away from Ikimur and it would be a lot easier to retake it if and when we have a retaliatory strike against us from the Saranids, so, hmm. It's just, I think Ikima would be a lot more fun because there are a lot more units there, so <laughs> I think we're gonna go and head off there and we'll leave our shadows in possession of Nuzdak Castle and hopefully one of our vassals will turn up from around Weyer Castle because as you can see they were defending from a handful of Saranid vassals. Now as you can see there is a Saranid vassal heading back there but I'm pretty sure some of our shadows should be enough to take them on maybe? <laughs> maybe not. It depends what kind of caliber units the Saranid vassal has in his possession. So, let us speed this up as best we can, and... Oh my, look at that! Emir Nuwas of the Saranid Sultanate has been taken prisoner by the Delthusum Empire. And I think I have just been reminded, I've reminded myself, of another comment that one of you left, and that was detailing the fact that you would like me to gather some relation with some of the vassals from various factions. Not entirely sure which factions I would like, but maybe from the Delthusum Empire itself, because it would be rather nice to have a few undead necromancers in our legion and make sure that they are on our side and not fighting against us. And as I say that the Ikimur garrison is going to have a huge amount of units, we are disappointed enough not to have that many, as you can see here. They only have 55, with quite a few vassals stationed here as well. So they have a few Mamluks and a couple of mages, but they do have two Dark Mages and one Bandit Mage in their Prisoner's Hold, so I think we're going to go in here. Oh yes, okay. And now I'm actually thinking that the castle over here is... Oh my! Yes, as I was saying, the castle over to the southwest, or southwest from our position at least, is probably garrisoned with a huge amount of units in comparison, but never mind. We have a declaration of war from the Blazing Hand. 
against the Delphos of Empire, so it appears that if we are going to branch off and make our own faction, then we will not have to deal with the Blazing Hand just yet. But as I say that, if we start our own faction in the Nord area or in the Vegia area, then we'll have to deal with the Blazing Hand a little bit closer than I would have liked, but mm, we will see what happens, I suppose. Okay, we will lead our soldiers and we'll see what happens, and I would like to use my throwing weapons a little bit more effectively this time around. Now, one of you has actually stated as well that if we are going to continue using our infantry companions, that it would be a really smart idea, and I agree with you, to invest in magic defense and to increase their intelligence along the way as a result. So I'm thinking that that is probably what we're going to do next. Even though they do have a pretty reasonable amount of strength now, I think intelligence will be something that we will be leveling up just to make sure that they don't die in one hit. Maybe get two or three in magic defense, maybe four if we're lucky, but yeah, I don't think that that's going to happen too easily. Now, why is this fellow... Oh, okay. Phew. <laughs> I was a little bit worried that Artimena had turned into a mummy lesser priest, but it appears that the name tag of the mummy lesser priest was, I suppose, fading through him a little bit. And we are obviously going to be falling off here, but it appears we are victorious nevertheless, and I do not need to worry about heading in. But there we are, five renown and 25 morale, very easy indeed. And we are able to take a huge amount of prisoners. Oh my goodness, all of them? Wow, okay. So, Dark Mages are our reward, and unfortunately, it appears I have a full company now. Oh my, we have 10 Dark Mages? Okay, this has become incredibly good right now. Okay, so, I think we're probably going to have to lose a couple of other Mages. I think Greater Mercenary Mages, Veteran Mages? Hmm. Well... Do we have anything else that is lesser? Hmm, not really. Okay, so one veteran mage, I suppose, we will be losing. And we'll take a couple of prisoners. Okay, Corsa, not too useful. That is fine. And should we request that Ikemo be awarded to us? Maybe? Because if the majority rules in favor of staying with the Deltas from Empire, I wouldn't mind having Ikemo under my command. But. Then again, I do have to garrison it, although we may gain quite a few shadows as a result, so maybe it will be fine. We'll see. Okay, 47 zombies this time around. No shadows, unluckily enough, but never mind. 47 zombies is probably going to be enough to ward off any potential interlopers in our territory. And Artyman actually leveled up. Wow, that's... Quite rare, I must admit. Usually he does not level up very fast at all. And I think, as a result of that, we will be leveling an intelligence, of course, and then going for some magic defense. Can he level up anything else? Not yet. So this is a good time to level that up. Magic defense. All the way to four. Oh my goodness. Okay, he's going to be a lot more survivable in terms of fighting against mages, at least, I hope. And we'll probably have to get him some better armor as well, because at the moment he's not really using anything that is too protective against arrows and other melee attacks from the brutal factions that currently inhabit Calradia. And we will now be leveling up Quiona. And she has some in magic... Whoa, okay. She has five in magic defense already, so we don't really need to worry about her, but I will be starting to level her strength up because she does only have six and now seven in it. So we are going to be leveling up her athletics, and then I think one-handed will be fine. There we are, that sounds great. So we have 134, that's okay. And we can now head on. 47 zombies, that's not going to be enough to defend against this fellow, is it? No, probably not. Shall we take this guy down? I think we probably want to take this guy down, even though we do outmatch him rather considerably in terms of power. And I do really like to fight against large odds. Oh my! Oh, speaking of large odds, Sultan Hakim himself has decided to come out of the woodwork and see Jikama while we are pursuing his comrade-in-arms. So, 
this, I suppose, gives us a good opportunity to take on a larger force than we are used to, I suppose, considering most of the Serenids are not necessarily too powerful at this time, which is, I would say, rather unfortunate, because I would have loved to have fought against them at their height of power. And it appears that Cherise was his fief, and oh, look at this. I have met in my travels one who calls herself Awa the Pearled One. Well, that is obviously the claimant, which I don't believe we will be helping at the moment. But yes, we will now be engaging the Sultan in combat. Okay, so what I will be doing as well is if we create our own faction, I will probably give all of our units wargs to ride. Now, that may sound a little bit too extravagant, considering we will no longer own Bloody Cliff, as far as I am aware, if we renounce our allegiance at least. So maybe I'm wrong about that. I have never really done that, have I? I've only done that once, I believe, and that was due to the fact that it was the first fief that I had taken in my entire time, I believe, playing a warband mod, or indeed a native warband. I really can't remember now. It was a while ago, so hmm, maybe that's something to consider. Oh, yes. Lovely damage right there from our fireballs, and really, I'm only able to use one. Oh, my. Okay, what about lightning bolts? I have ten of those. Let's do it. And now I have zero. <laughs> okay. Well, I have my cleaver. Let's do it. Okay. Well, <laughs> yes, our mages are beating us to the punch, as usual. Let's do this, guys. Or let's barbecue them <laughs> as best we can, I suppose. Oh, yes. Okay, Artie Mena was taken out by a mercenary mage, so apparently four in magic defense is not enough to be able to protect him. However, he was probably hit by a huge amount of magical spells at the time. And we're losing quite a few units to undead breaking, which is hmm, not exactly pleased about that, I must admit, considering they do become very useful units indeed, mummy high priests to that end. And there we are, it appears that one of our dwarf paragons was able to kill the final unit. So there we are, two renown and ten morale. Taken down Sultan Hakim, however, we are not able to take him prisoner. Okay, so there is a caravan from the Serenid Sultanate, but I do not believe... Ah, 30 skeletons. Very nice. Okay, we'll be able to put that into Ikemur as well. There we are. Okay, so I can only imagine, really, what our faction would be like as well if we were actually an owner of many of the fiefs in that particular faction, because they would all be garrisoned with skeletons and zombies by the looks of things. Oh, no. That would be... A little too weak, I think. Maybe we'd have to recruit a couple of mages, but then again, if we're at war with those particular mages, then it wouldn't be too good. So that's why I'm hopefully going to attempt to get quite a few dark mages and necromancers along the way while we are still a part of this faction. If and when we do leave, then it would be rather nice to have an overwhelming amount of dark mages and necromancers if we need them. So, oh my. Have you seen what I've just seen? This fellow has three silver golems and one necromancer. Oh my, we're going after him. Let's do it. <laughs> wow, and to think, I was about to let him go. Okay. Well, we have 118, he has 60, I believe. And we lose an undead almost immediately. Hmm. That's not too good. Although, it was only a mummy infantry, so that's not too bad. So, let's take a look here, shall we? Okay, they're over the hill there. Let's move our mages over there. And... I suppose our infantry can probably just charge in. I will be using our shield. Now, I'm pretty sure this uses mana, doesn't it? So we do have to be a little bit cautious. And make sure that we don't make ourselves completely out of it, because then we cannot use our fireballs and so forth to wreak havoc upon our enemies. Let's do it. Oh yeah, there we are. Very nice. Okay, now... Lightning bolt. Let's do it, yes, from the side, flanking maneuvers. Oh yes, and we have advanced to level 18. Now I'm pretty sure that... Okay. Well, <laughs> yes, I'm getting used to dying immediately, because of course we do have some very light armor on, but as I was about to say, I think what I will be doing with our skill points is actually leveling up strength. Because if I am correct, or at least if I recall correctly, the Vorpal Blade itself doesn't require any strength. 
or does it? Now that's the problem, you see. I am unaware of the actual stat requirements of that. Otherwise, I could potentially put our stat points elsewhere. But I think before we commit to specking into anything in terms of strength, agility, intelligence, and so forth, I will be heading around to the various towns in the Delthusum Empire and maybe even stopping off at Nara. I think we'll probably just go to Nara now and we will see what we can do with their marketplace. Hopefully they will have something of use to us. Oh yes, okay, so this is where I actually bought the Dagger of Throwing by the looks of things. As you can see here, there's a Dagger of Throwing and yeah, there's not anything else in that slot. Hmm. Well, it appears that we are unlucky. And what am I doing? I should head back to Ikimura and take a look at the marketplace there because Believe it or not, I was not able to, of course, look at the marketplace in Ikema because we had not taken it yet. But it appears that we are still unlucky enough not to have found it. But I was able to find nine Maul of the Titans. So yes, there are quite a few of these. Now I bought this generally for Frudak when he gets 25 in strength, which should be in seven levels, I believe. Is it seven levels? Maybe eight levels. But hopefully he will be able to use that sooner rather than later and become an absolute monster in Mortal Kombat. So, as a result of us not finding the Vorpal Blade, and I would like to see the results of the vote, whether we should leave the faction and start our own and so forth, I will be ending this episode off here. So, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.